If you're like most people, then you've probably wondered what it's like to be working from home in 2023. Is it as easy as it sounds? How does it impact productivity? How is it different now after the peak pandemic? What are the pros and cons? So in this video, I'm going to show you guys what it's really like to work from home as a cybersecurity professional. I start my morning by going through emails to see if anything urgent came up. Then I check my calendar to see what meetings I have for the day because I'm a very busy man. Right after that, I open up my dashboard to see how many emails has been reported to be phishing while I was offline. The platform we use for monitoring this is a product called Phantom by Splunk. It's a very useful solution where we can create automations to ingest and process emails. So 90% of the heavy lifting is already done. This usually takes a while to go through because the entire company's reports are funneled into a single destination. And I have to investigate almost every single one of them. Just to give you guys an example of the process, here's how I process this email. This is the reports window. And what I do is look at the outputs that has been generated by the automations and see if there was any initial detections. Then I look into the EML file, which is the actual email that the person received. So some common indicators of a phishing email are the urgency in the subject, the sender's email and domain, and also the general context of the email. So looking at this email, we can confirm it's malicious. So I just block the sender and recipient using another automated process. On a daily basis, we usually get at least 10 to 20 reports, but the majority of them are usually false positives, but that's fine because it's better to be safe than sorry. I also have to sit through a couple of meetings and stand-ups, but usually they are scheduled in the morning because people are just like that. So stand-ups are basically a meeting where you meet with your team to let them know what you're working for the day and if you have anything that's blocking you. So in total, my meetings are probably an hour a day, so that's not too bad. I've seen my manager's calendar where it takes up to three quarters of his day, so it doesn't look fun. My next routine would be to go through any detections that we have on endpoints. So endpoints can be laptops, phones, servers, basically anything electronic that an employee uses. And we use CrowdStrike Falcon as a solution because it's on the cloud and is easily installed in all of the endpoints remotely. So an example of a detection is this laptop here. I have to go through all of the information provided like the application or the activity that triggered the alert. Then I have to confirm if this detection is actually true positive by researching on this application, scheduling a call with the user so they can provide an explanation of what they were doing. The good thing about CrowdStrike is our contract allows them to provide 24 seven support. This means that I don't have to be on call for severe alerts because I know that the detections are being investigated by the CrowdStrike support team. But the only caveat is they only investigate medium to high severity detections. So I still have to investigate everything else. Next routine would be going through the vulnerabilities that we have on the cloud environment. The majority of our work is on AWS. So the two key services that I use to monitor the vulnerabilities are GuardDuty and Trusted Advice. Going to guard duty, most of the detections here are network related. A couple of examples here are detections on brute force attempts from malicious IP addresses, port probing, suspicious credential usage on our AWS accounts. An example here is we've had a particular IP address hitting one of our ports to search for a vulnerability. What I do here is just to search the IP address on this website and see how many times it has been reported by other people. Once I've confirmed that this IP address is a malicious actor, then we just block it off with our firewall. As for Trusted Advisor, the name basically explains it. The service advises you on vulnerabilities within an AWS account that needs to be fixed up. An example would be an IAM user that requires an access key rotation because it has exceeded a certain number of days. By this time, about three quarters of my day is already done. This leaves me some time to work on some development work. An example is this dashboard I'm working on Splunk. Basically, I want to create a dashboard to have an overall view of our firewall. This query is called SP which stands for search processing language it's quite similar to SQL so if you're familiar with that then you will have no trouble with SPL this is usually the fun part of my day because I get to be creative and do some development work instead of grinding through tickets and alerts so in terms of productivity I think working from home actually promotes it as I'm not distracted by little things like my team members trying to have a small chat with me or that one loud guy in the office that talks like he's giving a speech to everyone else. I declare
bankruptcy. There are days where I'm actually working longer than my usual hours, so having an office that's a couple of steps away is actually better for an incident response job. The favorite part of working from home is avoiding the horrible traffic to the office and back home. And another thing is also saving the cost on food and travel. So that's a luxury that I really appreciate. Ever since COVID has eased, my company is trying to get us back in the office like three days a week. They've sent out a department-wide survey and the majority of the people voted to work remote or come into the office like once a week. Personally, I come into the office like once a fortnight to increase the headcount. Most of my team members are working remote, so we organize like a specific day for everyone to come in and catch up. I think a lot of companies are trying to encourage employees to go back into the office, especially in 2023. But I think it really depends on your occupation. Like for my job, I think it's beneficial to work remote. It allows me to stay dialed into my work without anyone disrupting my train of thoughts. And whenever I have to complete something that's urgent, I just do the work at home without worrying about stuff like, oh, it's getting late, I should probably start getting home. So I hope this video gave you guys some insight into what I do as a cybersecurity analyst and the impacts of working from home. Thanks for watching.